Okay, welcome to another free lecture by mojomojo.design. Okay, so in this lecture, what we're going to look at is actually um, controlling detail or the depth or extrusion of detail um, for 3D printing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do a simple um, sphere 3D here. I'm going to drag this out, go straight into make poly mesh 3D. Control N, drag back out, go into edit mode. All right. Uh, let me just start from scratch with this because I did it the wrong way. So go in, grab the sphere 3D, grab it out, go straight into edit mode, make that a poly mesh 3D, and there we go. So we got this. So we got something to sculpt on. So if I start to sculpt with my Damien standard, press B and D on your keyboard to get Damien standard, you'll see it will cut into the model. And press control and hold the control key and press Z a couple of times get rid of that so what we're planning to do here is to get this um, sphere at a particular size and then have a depth cut into this sphere of a certain depth okay so the reason we're doing this is because your printer might only print to a depth of like 0.3 or 0.5 millimeters so anything under that you're not going to get that detail Okay, you're not going to get it to show in your 3D print. So it's how to enhance that. Now this is from my course um, all about uh, 3D printing and controlling detail. It's the Goblin War Chariot. You can find out more about that course um, at courses.mojomojo.design. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subdivide this model a few times and then we're going to set the size of this. I just want it so it's nice and clean. So I'll take it up to subdivision level six. So you can see it's a nice clean cut now. So uh, next thing I'll do is to say my size of this sphere in millimeters as opposed to units. At the moment, ZBrush measures this in units. So if I go to um, move, turn the gizmo off, and then we drag this line out here, you're going to see up here on the left hand side it says 1.4607 units now these are just converted straight into millimeters centimeters etc when you use the subtool the um, scale master but um, that's what it does so rather than working units I want to work in millimeters so to be able to do that we're going to go down to the scale master here we're going to set the scene in millimeters make sure that's orange there if you want centimeters, you could do that. And I'm just gonna hit, I'm gonna just do this slider to subtool size. That'll give us the size of this, which is a two, two unit at the moment size. And it gives me the sizes on the X, the Y, and the Z there. Um, you can see it's 1.99798, and it says two there, but it's really arbitrary, it's all two, okay? And when you drag it out, that sphere is perfectly round. So we set the slider subtool size there. So what's going to happen here when I set the scene scale is this will be 1.99798. Okay, so I'm going to hit this set scene scale. Okay, it's going to come up with this and we're going to go, yep, yeah, that's correct. That's what I want it. I want it in two millimeters. So now we've got a sphere here that's two millimeters, but I don't want it at two millimeters. I actually want this maybe at um, more than that. I want it probably at about 50 which is five centimeters so to be able to do that with one subtool it's important to remember with one subtool um, we're going to come down here and instead of the five I'm going to put 50 so it'd be 50 millimeters which is five centimeters so notice also slot lock slider to ratio so if I change one all the others will change at the same ratio also look down the bottom if you've got multiple subtools and you just want to make a size adjustment on one you do not want all checked but as I've only got one subtool it doesn't make any difference so I'm going to click 50 in there and I'm going to hit enter you're going to see these will change and I'm going to click resize subtool now it's going to zoom because it's obviously massive um, and this is now five centimeters or 50 millimeters. So we come in here and I just say slider subtool size. You're gonna see this has gone at 50. 
Now, the last thing I need to do is if we look at the floor, you can see the floor there is really small. So we just need to unify this scene. So we just need to basically go into ZBrush Scale Unify. Now this will just scale the scene, the um, scene up as opposed to the objects. So I'm gonna click that and you're gonna see this goes quite big now. Okay, there it is. So it's set that on the ground, that all looks good. If we look at our sub tool again, you'll still see it's still 50. So it hasn't changed that size. Okay, so this is five centimeters. Right, so if I want to cut in with my Damien standard to a specific depth, what you can do is we can do some tests. So what I can do is I can just append in a little square. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna append in a little cube. Now you can also, by the way, create a one unit which is one millimeter helper square so you could click that that's a quick way of doing it but I'm going to show you the manual way of doing it so we're going to go to append and click cube 3d there's a little cube 3d in there and if I move that cube 3d let me just put the gizmo back on you're going to see that one's behind so what I want to do is I want to set this to a specific size and then check my depth so I'm going to come in here we're going to go slider to sub tool size and I'm going to make sure I turn all off oh for one for some reason it's gone to two millimeters which means that's out as well so I need to just go up to my sphere again I just need to resize this sphere. it's probably when I unified the scale I don't know but um, I can change that so I make sure all's turned off by the way um, our little cube there is two millimeters so and remember you can check this so you can go back to the cube and go check and check that's two in there I'm gonna go back to the sphere select the sphere tool and I'm gonna go slider and you can see it's gone to 1.9 I don't know why I'm going to make sure all is not checked, okay, because I'm just changing the sphere. And I'm going to put my 50 back in again and hit enter. And then I'm going to resize just that tool. Okay, that should be good now. So let me just move it, reset this uncheck it lock it back up again and we can see there we've got our little cube it probably happened because I unified the scene I can actually unify the scene scene now I can go to ZBrush scale unify and it should be correct okay it is yeah so do that unify when you've got all those tools otherwise you're gonna get funny things happen uh, in fact I don't even need the floor so if we go now to this and we check this little tool, let me just turn that one on and go and measure this across. You're gonna see it's 1.9997. So what I wanna do is I wanna make this a, a length, a, um, a an actual scale that I can use to test my brush. So let's go and set this and we're gonna put this on 0 0.5, hit enter. Remember I've got all turned off and I've got the lock ratios on. I'm gonna go resize just this subtool. So there we go, that's the size of it now. So we've got a five millimeter, but we've got this at 0.5. And if we know our printer prints accurately at 0.5, then we're good. So let's put this into the model like that, you can see it's just in that model there. Good. Zoom out a bit. Okay, so now we've done that prep work, what we can actually do is we can start looking at our brush and um, how we can get that depth or that extrusion when you're hand sculpting.
Okay, so now let's get that same width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across, make sure I'm on the sphere. And if we look at our brush um, and we zoom in a bit here, we've got this little marker that's on the surface. So I want to make sure that my cut goes to 0.5 millimeters. So if I cut through this, you can sort of see the square. Um, that's not enough. So if I press the control and the Z to go back, we can increase this. And I put it on 100 generally, and then I cut through. You can now see we're actually at the bottom of the square. So it's kind of a 0.4. I mean, this is approximate, but we are sculpting. Now, if you have dynamic on, um, there are a few little issues that I've noticed. Like if I zoom really out, even though it's, it keeps the same brush size, um, sometimes it won't cut exactly the same. If I zoom right out, let me zoom out here. Notice it's not cut in the same way. So be a little bit careful with that. You can get away with a little bit of zoom, but too much. Now if you accidentally double click on here and turn dynamic off, then what you're gonna get is um, something that's uh, not going to work the same way. Notice it hasn't kept that size dynamically. That's because you've got the dynamic turned off. So you just double click that to turn it on. But that gives us now a good size. So I know setting up on 100 is giving us a good size. Now another way to get the depth that we want. Let me just go back a couple here. And get it back to this. That's on 100 so we're happy with that size. Yeah. But if we want to go a bit deeper, you can go to brush and you can go to depth and we can adjust or we can embed this depth to put it deeper. And that will give us, or it should give us a deeper cut. Notice it's deeper. So cutting through there, we're usually going to slice it. So you might want to use a combination of the depth. And once you've got your size and everything set up for that brush, you can then go ahead and start to sculpt in your detail. And also you press the Alt key and you can pull out that detail to that as well. So that same method would apply for all the other brushes as well. And once you've got that kind of standard um, depth sort of set, you can pretty much be ensured that you're going to get that depth work for that with that I probably need to actually rather than come in bed I want to probably push out a bit so that'll give me something like that now obviously you know um, if you're in Dynamesh you can smooth that off remember smoothing will knock it down a little bit but it will get that detail it's a way for you to measure that your detail is at roughly 0.5 millimeters coming out the surface so it can really help you guys that are doing the um, 3D printing. Of course, the other the other way that you can do it is where you can turn this size down. You could bring this up and you press one on the keyboard and it will repeat the last action. So you can come out using one as well if you want to. Generally, I find once you've done one cut to the right size, you can then look at it and you can say, right, okay, that is about the same depth as the other piece. So you can sort of work it out for yourself once you've got that reference inside there. So hopefully, that's going to be of use for you guys working out how to um, how to get detail to come out of the right size or how to control detail at the right size. Now, uh, in my course, um, the Goblin War Chariot, I do cover more techniques and you can use this technique that I'm showing you now in combinations with other techniques such as morph targets, um, surface noise and layer control to actually redefine these even more so to get even more um, control over those depths um, and that's all in my goblin war chariot which is control detailing for 3d printing okay so i hope you've enjoyed this free lesson and uh, check out the promo at the end for the goblin war chariot and uh, yep see you around this free lecture is from my zbrush 3d printing course the goblin war chariot in this course, we'll learn to actually control detail in this speed-driven guide to producing 3D printings with ZBrush. This course is live. Find out more in the descriptions.